All right, shalom, shalom. Um, I'm going to try to be real brief and uh, real quick with this message. Um, ran into an individual um, this week that actually told me and um, <clears throat> my significant other that the color of Christ does not matter. So with that being said, let me read a couple of scriptures first before we get into this. All right. John chapter three, verse 12. It says, if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? All right. Also, two. Let's read uh, John chapter four, verse twenty three and twenty four. It says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. Now, if I hold this picture up right here, let me see if y'all can see that real clear, nice and clear. All right, there you go. Now, if I hold this picture up right here, a lot of individuals across the entire world is going to say, hey, that's a picture of my Lord and J uh, Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, that's what they will say, okay? Now, if there's no agenda or his color doesn't matter, how come they copied it from this right here? And you can clearly see that the original depiction of Jesus Christ is a black man. As you see, he has the lamb across his neck. And even too, there is a leopard or a panther that he had by his feet, which just conveniently, when quote unquote repainted as a Caucasian man named Sejal Borgir, um, what you call it, uh, the second son, um, uh, 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 Pope Alexander the Sits of Rome um, conveniently was repainted as a Caucasian man um, in the same position and everything as you see of uh, the picture when he's depicted as a black man and this picture right here is the uh, is uh, the first depiction so if there's no if his color doesn't matter how come somebody that's quote unquote great as Michelangelo can't copy and paint a picture with all the paintings that he has done all the great material that he has done how come he can't get something simple as this correct and if there isn't no hidden agenda and his color doesn't matter how come a great quote-unquote painter like him can't get something uh together that deals with the uh, begotten son of the almighty creator what makes him great if he can't even do something that basic and simple of painting jesus christ according to the original depiction but he obviously can steal the uh the depiction of the lamb across his neck he didn't change that to a dove he didn't change that to a ram he didn't change that you know so uh I'm not going for that. Um, also, too, Adam in Hebrew, um, he came from the Adama, which is earth. Um, Adam means a rooty red man. Um, as you can see, you know, I ain't going to sit back and say that I'm really a reddish man, but somebody could probably say that. But he was a rooty red man so that obviously he had to be darker than me and in this society if i can be considered a black man quote unquote um which doesn't tie me back to any nation or continent and so forth um if i can be quote unquote considered a black man and we know adam was a rudy red man according to the standards that we are held to here in america that will make adam a black man um according to the hebrew because once again adam came from the adama and adam basically means um a rudy red man all right so that also debunks all that Mormon talk about uh, Cain being cursed uh, for being uh, being cursed with being dark because his parents were black, you know, and the Hebrew would tell you that um, even too, if you look at Acts chapter uh, 13 and it's in, and this don't get ever really brought up in church and I. It would be nice for someone in church to actually preach on this. 
But um, it says in Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian which had been brought up with Herod the, te uh, 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 the Tetrarch and Saul. Now that word Niger right there you can actually go look up on it. Look up on it. And on Bible Hub yourself and BibleHub.com is going to tell you the word Niger means black Christian. Um, you can look up the word Nagus, N-E-G-U-S, which this word really derives from, which also means king or emperor. Uh, emperor. Um, you could uh, look up the song, of, I believe it's by Capleton. It's called Nagus Nagas. Um, Nagus um, Nagas means king of kings So just like I said Nagus means king Nagus Nagas means king of kings uh, uh, and, and that's in the uh, Hamaric language That's basically what the Ethiopians would speak So um, prime example If I say De na na, That's how are you to a man Or De na nesh kanjo That's how are you beautiful to a female um, So um, when they say in Zabier that's basically the Lord of the universe. Uh, Nagus Nagas is the King of Kings, um, which deals with the second coming. If I was to say Ya Nagus Nagus, that's dealing with the King of Kings and dealing with his first coming. So Ya Nagus Nagus is King of Kings, but with the first coming, and Nagus Nagas deals with the second coming. But you can see that the uh, the word Niger derives from this word. But Bible Hub is still going to tell you that this basically means black Christian. Look it up for yourself. Um, also, too, you can look up the word Ham. C-H-A-M. Um, you take that C off and that's how, um, that's basically what the Hamites were named after. That word Ham, which means darkened from the sun or darkened from the climate. Uh, the climate. So, the reason why the Hamites are called Hamites from the, uh, uh, from the word Ham, basically, is because that they was darkened from the sun. And we know that the line of Ham is Africans. Um, Kush uh, is a word that means black. Um, Ethiopian is a, a, a Greek word that means black face. Um, these, uh, the word Keter. In Songs of Solomon, uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter one, verse five, is a word that means black. Um, even like for those that know about Tupac Shakur, um, the word Shakur um, is the word that you see in Songs of Solomon, chapter one, verse five, where it says "dark" or "I am black." That word "black" is Shakur. So, if you're a fan of Tupac, his last name means black. Um, Adam means black like I said before uh, Moses um, finger turned white in order for it to turn white and for it to be a miracle that means he had to be a dark skinned man and he comes from a line of Shem which is a known dark skinned people um, for example that back to that word Keter in Songs of Solomon uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 5 um, the word Keter um, it, it, it's a, a, a descendants of the Ishmaelites. So if the Ishmaelites, which are the brother of Isaac, which is the brother of Isaac, was black. You see where I'm going with this? Alright, so now, even too, we go to the depiction of Christ in Revelation chapter 1. And, and once again, people say color don't matter, but let's look at what it says. And it says, and starting at verse 14, it says, His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. All right. Now, I even seen people who want to argue, oh, well, uh, it says um, his head and his hair uh, were alike. Uh, uh, no, his hair, his hair, um, what is it? His head and his hair were white like wool, 
as white as snow so since it's light wool they want to say that it's just white but not really deal with the texture of the hair aspect but they get into semantics and they get into things like that but once again like i said explain this picture right here when this is the original picture and depiction of jesus christ as a black man with the lamb across his uh, neck uh, on the back of his shoulders and it also has a leopard or a black panther right there which michelangelo gets all this credit for being a great painter but he can't keep something simple as keeping the begotten son correct that doesn't make sense to me according to a picture that was directly in front of his face seems like there's a hidden agenda of uh, the color of the Messiah and his true essence of who he is and who um, you know basically uh, him being a black man now even furthermore also too just like um, just like when a baby was born in slavery and they took the baby and, the, and took it away from the mother and took it all the way to another plantation and basically gave that baby a, a spiritual mother, an old lady that couldn't work on the fields. But they detached the uh, child from the mother. Same thing happened with Israel. Israel was actually Greater Africa, East Africa. And to prove this, it was actually called in Hebrew the Haluak Afrikani. Ha meaning the Luak. You can look this up on Bible Hub too. L U A C H, which means plate. Um, in modern Hebrew, they're going to talk, I think they'd say it means calendar. But look up on Bible Hub. Uh, L U A C H means plate. And then Afrikani, just like it sounds, Africa. So the plate of Africa, Ha Luak Afrikani, is what? Israel was called so this was East Africa or what we would say is greater Africa now there was a canal um, between uh, I believe it's the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea that was created um, and this separated East Africa from Africa now we know the African people are black people so why did they have to create this artificial canal in order to separate East Africa from Africa which we all know that anybody from Africa um, we always look at or think about as being black so just something to think about but anyways um, just want to share that with y'all and once again this ain't something that's new same thing happened with King James you see black man over time whitewashed him same thing happened with Christ. Black man, white, whitewashed him. All right. So don't let people fool you. All right. We know what it is. All right. Now I'm not saying that a person is going to enter the kingdom by flesh alone just because they're black. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about individuals that say they are leaders in congregations or saying that they're going to go forth and they believe in the whole book, believe in the whole book according to what it actually says. If this is your Lord and Savior, and I, and, I, and, and I know we're not supposed to have images and stuff like that, but just let's say this right here is the closest representation of what he really looked like, would you still worship him? Or you're going to have a problem with him because uh, he's black. Though he is the only way to salvation. And many people still believed in him and worshipped him when he was depicted as white. So with that being said, shalom, shalom and have a blessed one.